Woo. Well, this is a uh, this is a sad day. I think there's gonna be a lot of people that probably uh, would disagree with my decision to sell my 2006 Tonga Green LR3. <laughs> All right, howdy, welcome back to the Addicted Motors YouTube channel. Um, we're gonna go over a few things today. Number one, sold the LR3. Number two, did some things to the disco. Number three, we're gonna be doing some more interesting things to the L322. Let's uh, let's go in. Now, um, this video is gonna kind of jump around because the events have not really been linear since I've been doing a lot of uh, repairs and had a lot of other things going on. Uh, so let's start with the LR3. The LR3 is gone. It sold. Uh, I posted a video of me thinking about selling it. I had a viewer inquire about it um, and we'd actually pretty much sold that day. So that is um, a really good thing and a really bad thing. It's a really bad thing because I really enjoyed that truck. Uh, that truck brought a lot of viewers to this channel and I really appreciate it. We did a lot of fixes. We pretty much fixed all of the small issues and larger issues that one uh, would have with a, uh, a first gen or whatever, you know, a, a Jag motored 4.4 LR3. So if you came to this channel for that, don't worry, there's going to be more of uh, parallel content on it. But if you are new to the channel, have not seen all the LR3 content, uh, please go check it out. There's probably 40 or so videos of fixes, repairs, journeys, and all that kind of fun stuff associated with LR3 ownership. Um, so yeah, I'll drop some uh, footage probably about uh, three or four minutes of footage of that uh, selling process of the LR3 going away, and then we're going to jump back to the disco. Woo! Well, this is a uh, this is a sad day. I think there's gonna be a lot of people that probably uh, would disagree with my decision to sell my 2006 Tonga Green LR3, uh, but I've had some interest, and with the truck in the shop for potential a motor replacement, and myself deciding that it'd be probably a fun idea to build the uh the lr or sorry the l322 supercharge i'm gonna you know take them up on the offer and uh and rehome this uh this lr3 so it's been an awesome almost two years with this truck i've probably put about 10 15 000 miles on it i've done pretty much everything uh <laughs> that you can think of as far as um preventative maintenance uh normal maintenance upgrades and whatnot and uh it's a good truck i'm pretty happy with how it turned out you should never sell a sorted truck but sometimes you don't follow your own advice and uh yeah i don't really have a whole lot to say i'm gonna kind of miss this thing because the utilitarianness of the interior, uh, the purpose that we purchased it for to uh, make it as our cabin cruiser just to put miles on uh, to kind of safely get us up and back from the cabin, up the uh, up the roads, through the weather. Uh, it fulfilled those duties perfectly. Um, and it's also a good looking highway cruiser and all that fun stuff too. I mean, it's been a great all around truck and uh, also kind of allow me to get back into newer rovers um since then i've got the d1 which is going to kind of take its place for now while the l322 gets built up but hey guys it is what it is um and i think someone is going to enjoy enjoy you know playing around and taking this thing on trips so here we are with the disco um, and guys, this is a much different vehicle than, um, than it was a month and a half ago. And I want to go over all the things that I've done to cheaply. Oh, oh, yeah, that's, that's to cheaply fix everything. And I'm, I'm not joking. I've been able to isolate and pretty much fix all the nagging issues that this thing came to me with, which I'm pretty proud of, but financially, well, no, uh, to get back. Most things were cheap. Uh, there were some things that weren't, but I want to show you what you can do if you get one of these old trucks to go through it, and, uh, and you might have some of the same parallel problems with it. So let's jump right into it. So I take that back. There is one thing that I did not fix. So let's start with the mechanicals, all right? Um, the large gas neck hose. I ordered a new one. It's not here yet. It should come in like 
probably the next day or so. So that's going to fix the gas leak. Uh, but let's talk about the rest of the mechanical stuff. All right, let's talk about the easy money, easy money mechanical stuff, things that I've done so far. Um, cooling system. This expansion tank uh, cap was hissing, leaking. That's been replaced. The drive belt, which was pretty new, found it was routed backwards. So we route, rerouted that correctly, uh, which is not something I noticed because the classic 3.5, or sorry, 3.9 was not a single serpentine belt setup, so I didn't really think to check that, but it was wrong. We have also fixed the window washer fluid um, dispensing. These were not working, they were clogged up. I blew them out with air. They started working, awesome. The snorkel, again, I've done a video on this, but we've installed the Southdown Safari snorkel. I have a video on that as well. There was a fender cut in the hole, so that's why we went ahead and completed that installation. So it had already been there and already started it. All right, power steering leak. We had a pretty substantial power steering leak. We replaced a couple hoses. Uh, the shop did that and that's fixed the majority of that issue. Vacuum leaks, missing a hose here. So found a hose, connected it back up. Valve cover leak. Uh, these uh, screws were a little bit loose, so I tightened it up and it's really staunched the flow. That wasn't really bad, but it was enough that I went ahead and uh, eliminated that issue. All right, the front headlight washers were just constantly spraying slowly, but we did cut the piece and just uh, shoved something in there to prevent the flow. Sure, I like it, that works. Bulbs, we replaced them all. This thing had so many bulbs out and this disco has so many bulbs, especially in the back. I mean, there's bulbs, bulbs here and here and here and here and here and there and there and there's bulbs everywhere. We went and replaced oh. underneath. We checked and replaced the front gift diff oil we checked and replaced the rear diff oil. We checked the, and re well, we replaced the transmission, but obviously topped up the, the fluid and everything there. So all the fluids besides the coolant have been touched. I also went ahead and changed the oil since I don't have a, a record of when the last time that was changed. We also, I also went under there and greased all the prop shafts, drive shafts, or CV, whatever you want to call them. The shafts, the shafts have been greased. Um, also changed the steering, um, the steering stabilizer and the pan hard rods. Those have been new and upgraded. We've also adjusted the e-brake. Um, I don't really have a full video on that, but you, all you have to do is pull this out, um, reach under on the left-hand side. You'll see a little knob. I'll show you it. It's, see that little knob? Right there, see that knob? Twist that and a little bit to counterclockwise and it'll sh tighten up your pole. It's not really in the mechanical category, but it still counts. Um, I added a matching spare um, fifth tire um, with some Lucky 8 lug nuts on it. And yeah, so we added that tire as well. Oh, why I said that. A upgraded larger side tire will fit on the back of a disco. It's not that much larger. It's a 235-85-16, but hey, it fits without any major modifications. All right, let's talk cosmetics and upgrades. First thing, did the mud flaps. I like mud flaps. I like the look of them. So we've got mud flaps. I reattached the factory roof bars, which are not present on this truck, just gaping holes where water was coming in. We revitalized the C pillar or the B pillar and the AP. We revitalized the ARB bumper. <sighs> we treated a small amount of rust on the floor. I put and refitted the clips for the visors. We sealed off any leaks that are coming in through the headlight, the headliner, lack thereof, and the sunroofs, um, and reattached a lot of the seat stuff. So it was not attached previously. Right. I also hooked up this kind of secondary power strip wire and replaced a bunch of the bad fuses that were here as well. This is an auxiliary power source, which feeds probably a lot of the existing lights that were here prior to when this truck had a rack on it. Um, it also allows power to be fed through my uh, 12, volt, 12 volt outlet that's in the truck. So it provides me a little bit of extra power. Um, all right, so let's talk about electronics too. When I got the truck, the rear windows were not functional. Um, a lot of the lights weren't functional. Um, yeah, I just had a lot of kind of quirks, uh, incorrect fuses and whatnot. So we went through the fuse box, replaced anything that needed to be replaced. 
And the big, the big one, not the big one, but the, the more invasive, annoying one was the uh, control unit for the rear windows. The auto up down feature has its own little memory box. I'll show you where that is and what I did. To All right, so it's kind of hard to see since it's kind of back there. Um, this is the control box for it. I'm in the glove box for reference. This is the control box. There's two, there's two connectors you need to unplug. So I unplug those, I plug them into the new uh, brain and then I just shoved it back in there because it's really hard to get the screws out. So now I have working windows. Uh, it's not the best visual, but it's a temporary fix that's working well. So I'm gonna leave it. Oh, another big one I forgot, sorry. Uh, the uh, the air conditioning. I've got the air conditioning working again. It simply needed to be charged. The, the air conditioning systems in 3.9 discos are fairly robust and it's actually held for the last three weeks so that is pretty impressive from just a quick diy charge up um, perspective so mechanically we've touched everything um, as far as the cosmetic interior electrical stuff i've went through and touched pretty much everything so let's talk about upgrades so far because there's some cheap easy upgrades that you can do for you know very little but very little right, so this one out of the real ladder didn't think i needed it probably don't need it but i like the look i think it's cool and it was like 100 bucks on ebay went ahead and did the that. camel trophy tire carrier i found it recently it was just been in my garage forever so we went ahead and slapped that on as well i already mentioned the mud flaps i think they were probably in total 40 50 bucks for the, for the flaps and the hardware so that wasn't a big deal seat covers these are on uh lucky eight rovers north they're about 80 bucks and i think they're a great alternative to uh you know your normal wear and tear you get on your leather seats and it provides uh, some pretty good protection radio head unit this is a big one guys i'm not really a radio guy but i bought this head unit i'll drop the ebay link it was about 50 bucks it does apple carplay navigation all that screen monitoring stuff um, and it is installed and i did it very quickly very cheaply very easily there's three connectors on the back of the factory radio um there are a, a gray one a tan one and a red one you just take those connectors out of the existing radio after you pull that out uh, there you you plug the gray one into the slot on the bottom of the new aftermarket radio uh, and then the speaker connector which is the uh pink one has instead of it being a six prong or or, or eight prong connector i think it's a ten prong so you just cut the last two bits, the last two open holes. You just get a, a knife that can cut plastic or some scissors. You just cut that out and shove it in the speaker hole. And guess what, guys? You'll have a working radio with some semblance of CarPlay. I was expecting to have to do a lot of wiring and do some grounding stuff. I did none of that because I'm a little bit cheap and lazy and I don't really care that much about audio stuff so I figured this was the uh, the best way to do it and if the ignition will turn ignition will the turn ignition lock goes on it pops on insert mobile phone I don't need that um but I can go back but it does car play and the phone's not hooked in so it's not going to show um but it actually works fairly well the sound's fine it proves that all my speakers work and i'm super impressed this will be great for the ride up to new york i'll have a little bit of tunes i won't have to have the phone up for navigation so it's a win-win i'm happy all right the, one of the other uh, upgrades or accessories let's call it i added the midland grms radio this is the mxt or the ma75 it's a 15 watt um grms radio uh, I figure I'm not, I'm not, this is not an overland build. I'm not into overlanding or anything like that. I just figured it'll be good for communications over long distances. And while I'm up at the event and also riding up uh, in, a, in a small convoy. So I think it'll be fun and easy. It was about 250 bucks. So a little bit of spend there. Uh, we're going to test out that antenna. Um, but I think it's going to be worth it. Uh, the last thing I did was very cheaply and, uh, you know, could have been a better wiring job. Wire in these two front uh, 450 hella lights they're kind of a temporary solution for a little additional lighting i wired them into what is the spare or the little dimming uh city bulb on the headlight uh right there there's the connector so they come on with the headlights i've got them pointed down so they're not blinding anybody they're not that bright anyway they're not as bright as the not very bright headlights so i'm not hurting or harming anything in the meantime but they just add a little bit of extra lighting so um you know i've got the I've got the lights i've got the radio 
Um, we've got the GRMS. Uh, the only thing I don't have is cruise control because I don't think it's wired. I don't think that it's a vacuum pump. I don't see it anywhere. Uh, if you know where that exists on the manual 3.9 Disco, let me know. There's a bunch, well, I know it's here, but there's no vacuum pump. I found a couple wires hooked to the air box, but I'm sure there's a pump there that initiates more vacuum. Um, so that's that's kind of where we stand with everything. So that is, that's the Disco build so far, and it's been a kind of a long and arduous journey. It's also been a lot more expensive. I like to say that everything has been done on the cheap. Now, I'm, I'm at where I would have been at six months ago if I didn't have to replace the transmission and do a bunch of other, uh, you know, mechanical things that took a lot of time and effort to source. I mean, it was just, it was just a fiasco trying to get everything put together. Um, so this is what the finished product was always supposed to be, just kind of a cheap budget disco project. And if you find one that's not a manual and everything is, you know, working for the most part, you can also do it. It's really what I'm about on this channel. Um, I like to find attainable, interesting cars and drive them uh, and use them for their intended purpose and show that you can really maintain this, this stuff um, on your own if you're not pulling transmissions and gearboxes and, and transfer cases out all the time. But uh, it is a super fun truck to drive. Uh, it gets a lot of looks, gets a lot of attention. I didn't think anything of that, but I think it is a pretty cool truck and a lot of people seem to also So agree. what's happening next? What's replacing the... Uh, the LR3 as the cabin cruiser and whatnot. Well, both of my cabin cruiser vehicles, well, it's also this one. Sorry, it's very comfortable to the LR3. Uh, it's gonna be the L322, I'm pretty pumped about that. The L322 is at the shop right now. We're getting rear subframe bushings, so it's a high mileage L322. It's getting upgraded uh, control arm bushings because the control arms you get from Land Rover and aftermarket have garbage bushings, so bring some big beefy uh, bushings in there that can cope with the braking and the weight of the truck and will not hopefully die within 15 to 20,000 miles like the original ones do. And they'll be better suited for handling the bigger brakes and the bigger wheels and tires that I'm putting on the truck. So I'll reveal the rest of that kind of mild build. It's going to be very similar to the LL3 here. Uh, once that's put together. So that's gonna be it for the Land Rovers, guys. Um, still getting everything, the whole purpose here is getting everything prepped and ready to go for the NARC 75th uh, gathering up in New York. If you plan to be there, hey, let me know. I'll, I'll be around, you'll notice the truck, come say hi. Uh, I've noticed there's a few viewers that are probably gonna be there. I'm gonna try to get a press pass or something that'll allow me to be a little more mobile. Um, but it'll be with Cindy and Max, so there's only limited things that I can do, but I am going to drive there from Pennsylvania with Mike and Zach and Jimmy and a few other guys. So we're going to be doing convoy up to New York. It's going to be about a seven and a half, eight hour drive with these uh, tractors. So that'll be fun and interesting. So that'll be something to definitely stay tuned for as time goes on. Um, the next thing that we'll have updates and videos on is the motor swap in the 7.3 uh, OBS diesel Ford, my pickup truck, the drop the motor off yesterday for a full rebuild so that's also at the shop so you know i've got a lot of cars that aren't here right now that are still getting worked on and i'm not hoovy's garage so this is coming out of pocket so it's been an incredibly expensive year for me uh, automotive wise another reason why the lr3 went away to help you know keep me a little bit in more out of the red than i already so was. guys that's enough of me blabbing i appreciate you watching the videos liking subscribing and doing all that fun YouTube stuff uh, keeps me uh, motivated to keep making videos. We're up over 6,000 subscribers now, which is awesome. Um, it's a very slow burn. It's a very slow process, but uh, I have fun making the videos. I think I pride myself on making videos of things that I'm, I'm not generating content for the most part. I'm just doing things I'd be doing uh, normally and to hopefully inspire you guys to buy some old crappy cars, whether it be a van, Land Rover, supercharged Jag, and, uh, and keep doing that fun car stuff with your buddies. So that's all I got. Catch you in the next one. Thanks, guys.